بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله الصلاة الصلاة خير من النوم الصلاة is better than sleep and Salat is better for you and the guidance and the light for you in all of your affairs and Salat as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said من قرق Salat فَقَدْ كَفَرَ That whoever leads the prayer has disbelieved. And we know that Salat helps us to remove our sins and our ma'asi and our dhulub. And all of us have these sins and this dhulub. All of us. And all of us are in need of izalati. All of us are in need of removing these sins. However, what we often find is we're not giving Salat its haq. And we're not giving Allah Azza wa Jal his haq. Haq Allah ala ibad and ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shayin. The right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over his servants is that the servant worships him and him alone and associates no partners with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to how the Salaf were with regards to this ibadah adhima which is the salat. This great act of worship which is the salat. And as the Prophet sallallahu said that it is the the, that which is between us and between them, between the disbelievers, a salat. What distinguishes us and distinguishes them is the prayer. Because if you go around in the society, if you look at me now, maybe you know I'm a Muslim, maybe you don't. But what distinguishes us is that prayer to Allah is a jail alone. So we have to give it its right. And that's advice to me. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Listen to this statement of the Salaf. Sami'a ahad al-Salaf rahimahullah ta'ala qawluhu ta'ala la taqrubu salat wa antum suqara hatta ta'lamu ma tukulun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the Salaf heard this verse recited, heard this ayah from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty says do not come close to the prayer and you are in a drunken state until you know uh, what you are saying. You know, until you're aware of what you're saying because when a person loses consciousness, when a person is drunk, when a person is high, that they are not in full recognition of what they're saying and what they're doing. And especially with the alcohol, especially with the khamr, the khamr that, that is the, the alcohol. And as khamr refers to as the word khimar, we know khimar, the women wear the khimar. What does the khimar do? It covers. What does khamr do? It covers your aql. This is where the word khamara, you khamiru, khimar. So we see that the verb khamara, this is to cover something. And that's why khamr is that is is covering the aql. That the, the alcoholic drink, what does it do? It covers your aql. It it it, it uh, makes a nuts, makes a uh, 
uh, it, it causes you to lose some of your uh, some of your intellectual capacity or awareness. So, one of the Salaf he said when he heard this verse, "Bakal kafir al musalli lam yashrub khamr." لكنه لا يدري ما يقوم في صلاته قد أسكرته الدنيا لمشاغلها. Beautiful, beautiful statement. So one of the salaf, the one who heard this verse, he said, How many people who pray and they don't drink alcohol? However, they don't know, they're not aware of what they say in their prayer. And that is because the dunya, this worldly life, has busied them, has busied their heart, and has covered their, their aqal in a sense. So Ahabatib Allah shows us that it's not just through drunkenness, and so forth, but we have to be give special attention to our salat, special attention to our ibadah. That it shouldn't be just some quick rituals that we perform without understanding and without benefit and without reflection and without seeking to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Al Qadada said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, with regards to this. He said, لم, ي... لم يجالس هذا القرآن أحد إلا قام عنه بزيادة أو نقصان. He said, no one sits and recites uh, this Quran except that it either increases him or it uh, it, it, it belittles him, or it, it, it makes him, uh, he loses. Then he says, Qadha Allah Azza wa Jal al-Ladhi Qadha Shafa wa Rahma lil-Mu'mineen Wa la yuzeel al-Zalimeen illa khasara So then, Imam Fatah said that with relation to this either raising you up or causing you to be belittled with regard to the Quran and reading the Quran, he said that it is a cure and a mercy for the mu'mineen. So this is a raising, a cure and a mercy for the mu'mineen. So for those of the ones who are reflect and attentive to the Quran and practicing the Quran. And then he said, وَلَا يُزِدَ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا and the oppressive ones, or the wicked sinners, that even if they hear the Qur'an, it doesn't increase them except for it belittles them, because it's telling them about their ending, their punishment. It's telling them about how low that they're إِنَّ الْإِنسَانُ لَقِي خُسْرٌ Barely in sin, mankind is in a loss. So it's letting them know they're in a loss, and they don't increase, they don't benefit from that, because the benefit benefits the Mu'mineen. The reminder benefits the Mu'mineen. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be reminded and thus and, and bless us to be of those who practice.